Over the years, humans have developed countless innovative technologies, one of the most prominent ones being in the field of aviation. Drawing heavy inspiration from birds, Leonardo da Vinci had numerous ideas and designs of flying machines. His later works from 15th century showed a better understanding of behavior of flight of birds. He illustrated concepts of lift force, showing how a curved wing would generate lift. He also makes some interesting observations on the gliding flight exhibited by birds and how they balance themselves using their wings and tail, a concept which would later on be used by the Wright brothers. Lift is the vector component of the force exerted by a fluid onto the surface of the object around which the fluid flows. In simple words, lift is a force which opposes the weight of the aircraft and maintains it in air. This force is perpendicular to the direction of the flow and depends on the shape of the wing as well as the angle of attack. The generation of lift can be explained by Newton's third law of motion. When the airplane interjects the flow of air, the flow is turned away in one direction, an action which generates a lift in the opposite direction. The pressure above the wing is lower and below the wing it's higher. Airplane wings are shaped in a way to make air move faster over the top of the wing. When the air moves faster, pressure of the air decreases. This difference in pressure creates a force on the wing that lifts the wing up into the air. The rotatory motion of the propeller pushes the air backwards which is called thrust. The propellers used back in the 1800s were as thick as that of a boat and were powered by steam engines. Drag is a mechanical force. It is generated by the interaction and contact of a solid body with either a liquid or a gas. Monoplanes are builds that have the highest efficiency and lowest drag due to simple wing configuration. But in the olden era, these advantages were overshadowed by the fact that the old builds had engines which were heavier, causing the lift and the overall maneuverability of the plane to be lowered. Biplanes offer several advantages over conventional cantilever monoplane designs. They have lighter wing structures, low wing loading, and smaller span for a given wing area. However, Interference between the airflow over each wing increases drag substantially, and biplane generally need extensive bracing which has additional drag and weight than a monoplane wing. A triplane has three wings of similar span and area, this provides greater lift but also additional weight and drag. These advantages are offset to a greater or less extent in any given design by the extra weight and drag of the structural bracing and by the loss of lift resulting from aerodynamic interference between the wings in any stacked configuration. Building upon those that came before, two brothers named Orville and Wilbur Wright achieved the first manned and powered control flight in 1903. They did this by emphasizing on a biplane design, greater control and more efficient gasoline engines along with thinner and lighter propeller blades to cut through air. They also used two propellers spinning in opposite directions instead of one to cancel out the rolling torque generated by both. To ensure stability, they also used a launching rail. The brothers found methods to control all the three axes of movement. They used wires for it. The roll is the rotation about the x-axis, yaw is the rotation about the z-axis and pitch is the rotation about the y-axis. The roll was controlled manually by twisting the wings using wires in opposite directions about the central axis, in a similar manner to what is shown here. This increases the angle of attack of one while reducing the others. This causes greater lift in the wing with a higher angle of attack, generating a torque about the center of gravity, causing it to roll. As the direction of the lift force is always perpendicular to the surface, a component of it acts in the horizontal direction of the plane, causing it to bank a turn. Now the greater angle of attack also produced more drag, which caused the plane to yaw in the direction of the wing with greater lift. This is called adverse yaw and was in the opposite direction of the turn they wanted to take. Now vertical rudders at the tail were added to counteract this by tilting horizontally which provided a greater horizontal lift in that direction, generating a torque acting at the z-axis which rotated the plane in the direction opposite to the tilt of the rudder. The elevators used in the flyer to control the pitch were placed in the front. This provided protection to the pilot in an event of a crash. Keeping the elevators at the front of the flyer provided additional lift to counteract the natural tendency of the wing to flip tail over nose due to the pressure distribution on that body. This proved highly advantageous in the low-powered flyer. In modern airplane, 
the shape of the body was streamlined for better aerodynamics. The elevators and rudders were shifted to the rear of the aircraft. This was to improve the stability of the aircraft in the event of a strong gust of wind. The biplane design has been discarded due to the ability to reach higher levels of thrust with more powerful engines. The wings were streamlined with the addition of wing flaps and aileron to improve the control over the flight. The wingtips also evolved, taking many different shapes and forms to suit the needs of the aircraft, producing a torque force to stabilize the flight. And finally, a landing gear was added to provide safety for passengers while also protecting the fuselage and wings from any damage. At a glance, the modern aircraft is a stark contrast to the Wright Brothers flyer. Some of the technologies used may have been lost to time. However, the basic principles of the flyer have been carried forward with the aircraft, evolving as technology progresses.